Today, I would like to talk about the topic of measuring the performance of model engines. I have noticed that many people comment on my videos asking how exactly I measure the performance of my engines. For this reason, I would like to explain my dyno to you in more detail. Basically, it works like a roller dyno for cars. The car does not move on the dyno. It's fixed with belts to hold it on its place. The driven wheels of the car drive the rollers of the dyno. The rollers have a high inertia as resistance, and at the same time, the speed and acceleration are measured via the rollers during the acceleration of the car. A software then calculates the power and torque of the motor based on the speed, acceleration, and inertia of the rollers. Let's take a look at how I implemented this principle in my dyno for model engines. The biggest difference is that I don't drive rollers with my engines. I use directly the flywheel for this purpose. The flywheel is therefore significantly larger than it would be the case when fit in a model. The inertia of the flywheel is selected so that typical 6.5 cubic centimeter four-stroke engines achieve a ramp-up time of approximately five seconds. It's important to note that mass does not equal inertia. My flywheel is made of aluminum and weighs only 400 grams. The goal was to achieve a high inertia with a low weight. For many, the electronics and software are probably the tricky part. Let me first show you this in diagram form. The components we need for the dyno are a flywheel with a magnet, a Hall effect sensor, an Arduino microcontroller, and a laptop with Excel. The function is as follows. The magnet triggers the Hall effect sensor once per revolution. The signal is processed by the microcontroller, which calculates how much time has elapsed since the last signal. Since the motor has made exactly one revolution during this elapsed time, the microcontroller can calculate the engine speed from this. This happens every revolution of the flywheel. When two speeds are measured, the change between the first and second speeds is then the acceleration. The acceleration multiplied by the inertia of the flywheel mass is the torque of the engine. The power is then the speed multiplied by the torque. The microcontroller sends these three calculated values to the laptop, which collects them in Excel and displays them graphically. Now let's look at how this works in practice. Here is the model engine with the flywheel. Here is the Hall effect sensor with cable. This box contains the microcontroller. And here is my laptop with open Excel. This is what the box looks like inside. There isn't much in it, just a USB cable and the connections to the two switches and the Hall effect sensor. Here you can see the magnet in the flywheel. The Hall effect sensor itself is mounted separately and is approximately two millimeters away from the flywheel, so everything is contactless. Let's now start the Saito FA40A and see what data we get. Excel tells us that we achieved a power output of 0.492 horsepower. The maximum torque is 0.352 newton meters. The maximum speed was 15,100 RPM. The entire system runs dynamically. This means that you can watch live as the performance curve is generated in Excel. Let's take a look at that too. It's interesting to know that Excel has a data stream function. As seen before, with this function, it's possible to record and display data live. Really cool, right? Maybe a few words about how I program the microcontroller. I use the Arduino IDE and its code. It's open source. 
Arduino code is based on C++, but with a simplified structure and additional libraries that have been specially developed for hardware integration. The code I wrote for my dyno is 92 lines long and not rocket science. For those of you who are interested, here is the code. Please press pause if you want to study it in detail. That's it for this video. I would like to thank you all and would be happy when you like, share, and subscribe to my channel.